Okay, welcome back to the channel. This time we're tackling something other than a Tamiya kit and we're looking at the Zvezda 135th scale M4A2 Sherman with the 75mm gun. Now, uh, Zvezda aren't particularly known historically for um, fantastic quality kits. However, in the last couple of years, they've really stepped their game up and this kit is, is brand new. It's, it's March March to April 2020 and it is absolutely stunning. It's really great all the way through a couple little things we need to think about first off is the gun barrel now for some reason there's two bits uh for the end so the way they do the gun barrel is you, you have to put the open end to it which kind of defeats the whole object of having a single piece gun barrel but nevertheless you get two separate parts and i can't work out at all what the difference is between those two so maybe someone could let me know down in the comments the other thing you've got to remember with this kit as well is it does depict a very specific type of Sherman, uh, one mainly used for the export version for the Lend-Lease. A few went to the Pacific as well, so you want to check your references. There's differences with tracks and the running gear and, and the whole type, so um, we're just going for the box scheme, so there's no issue there. Here you can see uh, gluing on the end to the gun barrel, so I will say from this point, if you really want to tart this one up a little bit, um, a metal gun barrel and some photo etch uh, light guards would really lift this model from the out of the box um, state that, that you get it in. Um, so we'll deal with the end of the gun barrel shortly. We've also got a seam line running along this um, section of the turret. Now, one piece turret which is nice. Uh, obviously, we've got the set. They all have that bottom section that has to be joined on, but it's very nice to get that. Sometimes it's it's done in a, a number of different ways. So we need to get rid of that seam line there. No issue, really. You know, you can just sand it back. Heavy sanding stick. doesn't really matter because we're going to be putting cast texture on this. Um, and we've got that section at the back there again. Uh, same principle. I get a good join, but you can all you can sand it flush. We don't have to worry about getting rid of seam lines or anything because we're going to use we're, we're going to actually put in um, some casting mold lines, as it were, and um, that will disguise all of that. So just clamping all of that together there with the trusted clothes pegs, and this is just to make sure everything bring comes in together with the glue. I have noticed it's quite a soft plastic when you use it with Tamiya to fin. It's not soft in the sense of like airfix plastic. Uh, but when you put the tack tam your extra fin on it, it does melt it quite quickly. And you can see I've used super glue there for the end of the gun barrel. And that means that we're going to get a nice good seam, seamless join, basically, once it's sanded back. Um, and it's easy to sort out. Now, one tip you'll see in the next frame that I actually go a little bit over the end. And I've rounded off the end, which isn't correct. It should be a very straight end to the gun barrel. So something to keep an eye on. Um, and the working mechanism in there as well. It's just a little bit wobbly, so just take care with it. Again, it, when we used to Tamiya kits, this is just a slight step away. But it's no problem whatsoever. Take your time and um, test fit. And uh, you, you won't have any issues, especially with this kit. I wouldn't judge this kit by every Zvezda release. Is, is I wouldn't judge every Zvezda release as high as this kit. I'd uh, do your research on scale mates, check the reviews and that. But anything that's come out in the last couple of years is actually really quite good. They've got a couple of um, T-34s, uh, among many other things that I can't quite think of. And there's quite a lot of modern vehicles as well, so well worth looking at as a manufacturer. Now, one of the oldest techniques in the modelling handbook here is stretch sprue, and that's with a candle, we're just not putting the plastic in the flame just holding it above until it starts to get soft and then we just pull it apart gently and that gives us a piece of plastic rod really it's, it's a bit soft so it's not straight <clears throat> in the way that you you do it but it, it's absolutely fine for what we want to do here which is create some molding um, marks or some cast marks on the rear of the turret there's a section here. I was using uh, a link that I've put in the description below for Prime Portal. Um, using a walk around on that website for the M4A2, which um, showed quite a lot of this as far as the casting numbers and the casting texture and all that is um, is shown. So I thought I'd just depict that as we go through. Now you'll see what I mean about the Tamiya Extra Fin eating into this plastic quite well. As soon as I just push it in, 
you can see a, a bit of this uh, disappears. It um, it melts right through it, uh, but it's not a problem. It's all in the from the, from the angle of being quite rough. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. From the very nature of the casting process, really. You can see there the centre section. It was just a little bit too thin. Not quite enough plastic there, and it just melted through it. But uh, as I say, not an issue. It'll all come good in the end. So you just want to line that up, level it up with your reference, and and go with it, really. I'm bending it around the edges as well, because that's what I saw in the reference, and just gluing it down. But bear in mind, this is all going to be completely covered. So we're only putting this there, so we actually get a ridge under the Mr. Surfacer that we're going to put on top of it. That's the principle behind it. And another nice feature about this kit is um, you don't have any cast textures. It's all very smooth finish to the plastic, but you do have all of the casting numbers, and we'll have a look at them uh, shortly. So this is, again, a little bit different. All the models we've done so far have had a complete whole tub. Um, so this is in separate sections, which can be a bit tricky. However, thanks to the very good fit from Zvezda here, uh, it's not a problem at all. It kind of clips in with friction once you get it right, and it, it will hold itself there for a little bit. So uh, you can glue it all together. And we've also got the centre part as well which is like a firewall or, or, or a support that brings it all together and then the sides join to that and it makes it square up and um, looks quite true. I have actually checked this off camera with the other parts that are going to come to this. So we've got the um, drivetrain cover or the gearbox cover. I forget now with the Sherman terminology but the, the, curved, the curved section that bolts onto the front. So I've put that in there just to make sure that the spacing's correct. I've also put in the, the rear plate as well and made sure it all comes together and then taken all that apart and come back to this point where we actually glue the sides in. And it's important just to push everything home and make sure you get a good fit there and make sure everything looks right. Now you can see the spacer or the firewall, whatever you want to call it, that section there is going in and that just brings it all together again. So I actually don't glue that and this is what I was saying with the test fit. Make sure it all um, all slots in where it's meant to. Some of these things, certainly on Sherman's, uh, kind of go against logic a bit, I've noticed. There's certain bits you don't think would actually look like that or fit like that, but they do. And you get some sections that are kind of overlap other sections. and. You, it's sort of hardwired to think of a smooth join or a smooth fit, but that's not always the case. It is sections sort of bolted together. Something just to bear in mind there. Rear section there coming together with, I think it's a bit of an exhaust outlet there as well. I think there's some louvers that sort of direct the flow of the exhaust fumes. And um, there you can see amazing fit. This is sort of Tamir-esque here. I was uh, very, very pleased with this as I started building this. I was amazed at just how good it was. And for that to slot in there from a multi-piece assembly for a whole tub is just uh, phenomenal, really. And again, that engine deck or, or cover slotting in again, a run of Tamiya extra fin, and you don't need to think about it. You just move on to the next bit. It literally is just like putting a Tamiya kit together. Surprisingly good. Um, and for the shortcomings of the kit, which are things that you, the gun barrel is just a strange decision, but you, you can't really do much with plastic, um, light guards. So, you know, make of that what you will. But I think the gun barrel is a sort of must. I, I'm thinking on getting another one of these and maybe trying to do a Pacific version. And, uh, certainly I would jump straight for the gun barrel and then think about what else I'd like to add. The rest of it is pretty good, to be honest. Even for people who, who like to add a lot to their kits. Um, I mean, it, it there's, there's not much needed to be added, which is impressive. And the fact that you've got all the casting uh, marks as well that are added is another fine point. That a, a lot of kits don't really, um, unless it's a, a modern state-of-the-art kit, you don't really get that anymore. We're just um, putting in these uh, sort of iconic Sherman fuel covers or fuel caps. I'm sure some must be for the uh, oil as well. 
We've also got some um, lifting points as well, so eyelets, hooks, whatever you'd call them. I think it's where the, the hole gets lifted up in the factory, and again, if they want to um, take sections off. And just pushing that down gives us a little bit of a weld bead there as well. So here I, uh, I'm saying about the light guard. So I thinned one down, which is on the right-hand side, which looks much better. But it's still some way off from what it actually would be like. So you can see how thick they would be. This is, in real life, this is sheet metal parts welded together. So it's about two, three mil wide, I suppose. So it's a good chunky bit of metal. You know, you couldn't bend it, but if you, um, if you hit it with a sledgehammer, you'd put a dent in it. So it's not very strong stuff and it is just welded together. So once it's thinned down, it does look pretty good. And I'm just sort of taking a chunk out of the top there, but you want to be careful now, because where you thin that plastic is, as much as I have it, you, you're asking for trouble. But I thought I'd just thin it out a little bit more. I have actually got some 3D printed versions of these, but um, we'll look at that much later on. I didn't think we'd bring that in just now. Um, this, light guard is a bit more tricky so it's, it's not really going to be easy to trim that middle part uh, that top part down so i'm cutting that out and i've just replaced it with a piece of plaster card and then you can see i mean it's it's close enough we're in the ballpark it's not quite thin enough but it is a, it's fine for you know this would be a very good place to start with um this sort of thing thinning down so there we've got all of the sections now all pretty much together. These are the main parts that um, are going to come together to, to create the tank. And um, then we've got to do the wheels. So we've got separate road wheels. Oh, sorry, no, we haven't. We've got, we've got one section which has got the, on the road wheel, it's got the rubber tyre and everything joined to it. And then we've got the centre section of that wheel pushes into the centre of that. And that gives us a a, a two-sided wheel. I imagine they've done it like that to be able to get the amount of detail that they have inside the hubs. And then with a bit of glue, that's all done. And we're going to spray these as usual. So we're going to spray the rubber black and then use a wheel, a circle template, and um, spray the centre of the hubs. Give us a good outline. And there we go. All looks well. All sanded down, got the seams out of the middle of the uh, rubber tyre bit. Now we can start looking at the sprockets. So we've got two types of sprockets here, which is showing that hopefully we're going to get some more versions of this down the line. I must admit, if we um, if they do the whole run of uh, Shermans, I mean, we're looking at a new budget range of Shermans that's going to far surpass anything that's out there. And I mean, this is even rivaling, rivaling the Ryfield models uh, Shermans. When you think it's £25 less, Yeah, you're getting a. It's 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 really giving it a run for its money. I've got to be honest. Um, at that price point, there's nothing that can even compete with this. So, getting the bogies together, they actually want you to put the wheels on, which is going to make it very difficult to paint the tyres. So, I've come up with this ingenious plan to cut off the pegs that the wheels sit on and cut them down so there's only just a little bit showing so that we can then get the wheels on and off after painting. Um, and it works quite well. It do, it's not potentially always going to work, but in this instance it does. And there's enough of a nub there for it to uh, be able to hold it, but also get it off. And here you can see I'm, how much I'm cutting off. Leaving about a millimetre. And that's just enough both sides to grab that wheel and hold it inside the bogey. It's quite a complex... Um, thing in itself the the bogey as it goes together but it's it's i don't think there's any other way you could really do it to be honest it's generally how fit how manufacturers do it these days now we can see fit of the hub on the rear idler is a little bit not quite as good as the main road wheels but it's good enough you're not really going to see it we've got the sprocket there as well so you've got the the tooth ends join on to this um cylindrical part and it's a very good fit as with everything surprise surprise it um it really comes together and then we've just got the rest of the bogies to sort out 
slightly tedious work, but it you know it's okay. You just kind of set up an assembly line and and go for it really. I'm just showing you here uh, how it goes together, so I'll leave you with that as we uh, progress. So all that's clamped together and left to dry. We've got the uh, the front section here going on. It is, it is a cover, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it's designed to be able to um, just bolt on and bolt off. You just take that out and you can put a whole new um, dry, drive section in there. With a little bit of wiggling, I was a bit worried that we had some fit issues here, but it, we don't. It's just got to line up and then it all snaps in together. And that section that I've got in my hand here, which has got all the bolts, holes, um, you're meant to put that in before and I'm just checking to see whether uh, there's going to be any fit issues with that but it is actually exactly like the reference there's like a, a noticeable line um, where it joins to the hole there shouldn't be a join between uh, where that section meets the curved front section so here this line that you can see now that shouldn't be there but there should be quite a gap behind where all those um, bolt holes are. So we get rid of that seam, just glue it all together and um, sand it back and then fill it in with the, the Mr. Surfacer because luckily that is an area that gets textured. So we've got the exhaust here as well, which is the, the actual main muffler exhaust bit. And again, I'm just trying to work out whether I can paint that separately and slot it in afterwards, which I can. You've kind of got to bend it in there but it does go, it's all right. And then you, you sort of twist it with some tweezers and it will slot in. And you can see that front section now is glued in, another test fit and all is well. So now we are running down to what this is all about. This is about progressing on from the Churchill and adding some cast texture. Now, as uh, would be my luck, I lost the footage of me adding cast texture to this model. However, because I took so long to edit it, <laughs> there's a model coming in the future where I am going to be doing a lot of texturing. So, uh, you know, no prizes for guessing what this, this model is, but I, I won't actually mention it. Um, you might not be able to work out what the manufacturer is, but um, it's pretty obvious what the turret is. So this is the cast texture. So this is moving on from the Churchill. Now we're actually going to do an entire turret and other parts. And we're going to blend it in and smooth it down, but give a nice finish, a sort of scale finish. So using the Mr. Surfacer 1200 here and my trusty brush that I use for this. So um, you don't want to use a big brush. You want to use a small brush, which goes against what you would think but you just plaster too much on and you, you want to work in sort of 
smallish sections, but you can see how much I've done here. It, that's about the right amount. It's about um, two or three inches or about uh, 10 centimeters, I suppose. Um, if you work in sections like that, once you've put it on, as you then work back, it will be starting to dry, it'll be starting to gas off, and then you can um, start to manipulate that texture. And it's as it dries, that's how we get the texture. Now, because this is a Soviet tank, what we're doing here, and although the M4 is a Soviet M4, it's built in the US, that's a bit heavy, what I've done there, but it's the same principle. So if that's too heavy, you just go back over again and that will lessen it because you'll put more marks in it, which will make it smoother. And we can also sand it back as well using some large sanding pads. So that's how we do it. And this is where specifically for this version of the Sherman, this is where the cast texture goes. Just in that one single section there, which is in the top plate of the hull, which is where the driver's hatches are. There's also a section here, this welded, if you can see the welded ring, I know we've got the raised uh, sort of almost rectangle, but there's a circular welded part, which is the machine gun mount. And that is, is again, is pushed into the front plate of the hole and welded. We've also got this section as well, which is that removable bit that I was talking about, the drive, drive train housing, which I'm calling it at the minute. So all of that is cast texture. And then we've got the mantlet and the entire turret is also receives cast texture. As well as the um, section behind the mantlet as well. I've, I've seen some Shermans where it doesn't actually have this mantlet cover, I suppose it's called, um, as the actual bit behind it is the mantlet. And then you can see the entire turret. And what I was also talking about is we've got the casting numbers as well. And we've got the casting writing on the top that all gets left and that will just show through this cast texture that we've done. We've also got that section at the back, that sort of seam, cast seam there. That's looking pretty good. That's where we put the stretch sprue and we've got a few other sections which I've just um, done with the cast texture. You can also see those numbers there again showing through, which is looking pretty good. And then the driver and radio operator's door they both get it, as well as the doors on the cupola, so the um, commander's doors, the loader's doors, all, all, all of that stuff that would be sort of separately placed parts, if that makes sense. That's, that's how it works. And it's good to do them all separately because then when you glue them on, you don't have to worry about uh, getting stuff on areas where you don't need it to, to be. Like the commander's cupola, for instance, that... Um, it's more effective to do it separately and then glue it on as it would be to actually do it on the on the tank. So one last thing, it's a little little upgrade we want to do here. You've got this the, the lip there, you can see, which is where this mantlet glues to. It's quite sufficient, but it doesn't go all the way around. And just as I was worried about weakness later on in the build, I can see it kind of pushing through at the top, like I'm doing there. So I decided that I'm actually going to glue um, glue in a piece of plaster card there uh, to give it a bit of um, backing so it doesn't fall through. I just feel like that's asking for trouble. It's a kind of weak point. So just with a piece of plaster card leaning into the right direction. Once that's fixed, uh, we can put the mantlet back on and it will um, give it the support that it needs and stop it falling in there. And now uh, for the next section, once that's all glued on, I'll leave you with that. We're just bringing the turret together and we're getting all the parts glued on and um, progressing with the build.
So once the turret is finished, uh, it's time to start looking at the running gear. So I've got the bogies glued on and all sorted. They also got the cast texture as well as uh, the sprocket. And I've tried to fill the um, tops of the runners there on the return section going on to the return roller. Now we've got these uh, sponsons, I believe they're called, which is something that wasn't um, in the Tamiya kits and some other kits don't always give you these sections so you then you get a hole when you look back up through uh, but they glue on very nicely I was again worried about the fit because these need to lock into the um, hole top hole as it joins in but it, it all works very well as long as you get it slotted into where it's meant to be and it is quite a um, secure fit it all works perfectly And now it's time to look at the tracks. So for that, we've uh, put all the wheels on and um, the sprocket and the idler are on in, I think I've actually glued them on. Sorry, I can't remember looking at it. <laughs> um, they might just be white tacked on, but really you want the sprocket to be movable so that you can, oh no, it locks in. That's right, sorry. Yeah, because of the way it locks in, I have glued the sprocket in, um, assuming that uh, the tracks are going to fit perfectly. Now, this is the first time we've done Lincoln length tracks, and this is an okay example, however, it's not absolutely perfect. I found that it was a little bit of a tight fit, which then meant they were sort of springing in a little bit and looking unnatural. Um, but nevertheless, I do get there in the end. So the, the thing with Lincoln length is you've usually got this top run, which has any sag in it, Debatably, there is sag in this, and that might actually be a little bit too heavy for a Sherman, even this type of Sherman with these heavy, heavy type of tracks. Due to the tracks having a, a live system, so it means that they were under tension, and that's mainly for the Sherman type suspension. So you can see I've put the two sections joined to that one long run at the bottom there, so we've got We've got two bits and here you can see how it's springing away a little bit and when you push it in where it needs to be it either then bends up where my thumb is or springs out so this was a little bit of a problem and not massively easy to fix um, and it, herein lies the problem sometimes with Lincoln length tracks and having the fixed sprocket because that sprocket just needed a slight turn so I've taken it off you can see where I've got the two pins there. We're going to cut those off and that allows us to move that sprocket just a little bit to get a bit of um, play. This is why I was saying earlier, I trusted in the system and glued them on, but really for any type of track, you want to leave the sprocket movable because that's the one fixed point. The rest of the wheels, it just runs over, but because it locks into the teeth, you do have to... Um, get that right unfortunately so here you should be able to see it locks in much better once the sprocket actually plays ball so with four <laughs> four hands here um you can see what i mean moving that sprocket has now brought that in and that corrects that little issue so the next thing we've got is um, with Link and Links, we get some links. So we've got to put some links together and these are the ones that run around the main curve of the sprocket and join back on with the run going along the top of the suspension and around the idler as well doing the same thing. So these are simple tracks actually, very, very good. You just literally cut them out, clean them up. I've got an ejector pin in the middle there, but I don't worry about that. You can't really see it. And you just slide them together and then a touch of Tamiya Extra Fin between the link. 
and then just leave that a few minutes till it sort of hardens up, starts to set, and then it'll still have some play in it, but it'll be it'll be soft. So you'll be able to mould it around the sprocket uh, like this. And that's what you want. Should be just enough play in it that it locks in. And then you can leave that there to set as a mould, or you can join it on and um, put all the tracks on as well. I'm going to leave these tracks off, so we're going to do it in a way that they can all be glued together once they're painted. Uh, but you could glue them all on and paint them afterwards. It's, it's up to you. I find it easier to paint everything separately and bring it together, but there's um, certainly an argument for um, it in armour modelling for gluing it all on and painting it as is. You just have to see what, uh, what what's best for you. So here we've got that join now. As you can see, it's under pressure. To get that in, you've got to you've got to push it in there and hold it. And doing that while the glue dries is is a bit of a problem, and that then creates a weak point. So I've taken the tracks off the tank with the sprocket, and I'm just going to set them up now how they want to be, so that we got a good join. And then once we bring that onto the tank at the end we can then manipulate it so it actually looks how we want it to look. So we've got the top run joining on as well, and we're using that sprocket as the fixing point. And the idea with this method is once it's all hardened up, we can put it on around the sprocket and then anchor it down at the rear of the vehicle on the idler and the um, last bogey, and then that will pull everything down to where it needs to be. There you can see the nice join and the nice detail in these tracks. They really are very well done. The whole model is brilliantly done. The, the few tiny little issues that we've had, which aren't really issues, you know, are all forgivable. It makes for an extremely good kit. Look at that for a track run. No vinyl, no, no problem. Relatively easy as long as you don't glue on the sprocket. Again, this kit is uh, easily accessible for under £25. So once everything's dry, I've put it on just to check that we're all okay and we can slide under there, under the sponsored. Because we want to go ahead and actually get the hole on and get everything sorted. Now you can see now I've glued on the sprocket, I believe now. And I can then just lift the track off and slide it down over the top. And that's what we want. That's where we want to be. We want it all glued on all sorted the only thing to come off now is these wheels which are on the bogies but the bogies are fixed and uh, now is the time to flip those off and using the method i showed earlier you just need tweezers just to slightly bend the arms out a little bit it's um quite pliable pl plastic so it's not a problem it's not brittle so it's not going to snap and then once you've got it there you just pull it out and there you go now we've got the periscopes and what i'd say here is I'm putting on mask hole onto the front so we can use the clear part which is fine that's any kind of masking fluid but there's an angled section at the back that a piece of plastic glues to so where they're in now once you slide the periscope in there's a kind of cover that goes on the rear section and I did not paint this and you can see the glue through the clear part the, the glue staining of the plastic joining the top of the periscope. So it's advisable to paint silver on the rear angled part. So this section you can see from above, that clear part there. Paint that silver. Then when you glue the bit on, you'll get a reflection for it. And this is the bit I'm talking about. So in between here. And another thing I've noticed is these section, these round sections where the periscopes go. I've actually glued them on the wrong way around. There's a lip uh, at the front that I've just cut off and now I'm scoring in at the back, which is where this cover, I suppose, it's a periscope cover, I imagine, for when they pull the, the periscope down, is for where that rests. So these two in the door should have been the other way around. It doesn't really make any difference other than having that lip in front of the periscope. And um, doing what I'm doing here just fixes that. So on the glue portion here now, where this bit joins, that's what you want to paint silver. Don't leave it clear, because as you look through, like I said, you can see melted plastic. Or you can um, 
paint the periscopes. So you don't have to use the mask. Oh, I thought I'd try it here and uh, it works quite well. Then we've got the light guard going over as well, which slots into those holes. And that is just about passable, I think. It probably should be a little bit uh, more delicate than, than that. It looks a bit heavy. But again, it's the same as the light guards. It's good enough out of the box. And it very much looks the part. Now it's time to make the two parts of the hole together and um, start bringing the build to a close. And that is um, that is where we'll leave this video. It's, it's all about the build. The, the painting will be finished in the next um, video. So it's a two-parter, this series. So make sure you stay tuned. Now here you can see that where the join at the front goes on and it is very good it snaps straight in and the sponsons snap straight in and around the back that all clips in nicely as well there's no fit issues there's no gaps there's nothing that needs filling it all pulls in nicely it, you know you do need to glue parts and then hold them together for a moment but it all fits perfectly and now this is one of the most impressive parts we've actually got the um, it's it's the attachment points for the side fenders, which are on all Shermans, and these these are holes for well, bolt holes really. So you just bolt the fender straight onto it, and this is often uh, missed or not represented as holes. Even in the new Tamiya Easy Eight, it's got this is part of the the side of the hole, but there's no holes in it. There's no impressions and there's no cuts, so you have to add all that yourself. So again, this is, is a brilliant thing to have. And we've got some applique armour here on the side. So these I measured up using the instructions as a diagram, which is the same size as this part. So just kind of roughly measured it up. Got it where I like to think it was level. Slightly moved it at the end, nervously. Um, and then just with a touch of Tamiyach to fin in one corner, just to hold it. You can then place it, make sure it's level, and running along straight and parallel with that um, part for the fenders and then just a little push should mean that it glues down nicely but we don't get a load of um, melted plastic coming out the side now unfortunately you get a very nice molded tow cable which is meant to go into a certain position but mine was broken to pieces uh, on the sprue due to the packaging. So I'm not gonna use that, but uh, we've got the rest of the tools and final parts that need to go on, including the 50 cal machine gun. So some of these parts do need to be added. We've got the towing lugs and the footsteps that need to go on to the underside of the differential cover. Finally remembered what it's actually called. I've been saying drivetrain, but it's, it's the differential cover. And um, that those those parts down there, are the towing lugs and the footsteps so they go on as well that's just getting all of the parts ready for the painting stage which will be in the next video so as always thanks for staying tuned and join us in part two next week when we'll be covering the painting stage doing all of the weathering and bringing the build to an end as always if you like what you see do let me know your comments down below give the video a like subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video